Hey guys, Silence here. here. Welcome to a unique unboxing slash product review slash recommendation video. Uh, sit back, make yourself comfortable as we take a look at some of the official Beyblade X products and of course some products that you probably can find in some cheap thrift stores or even Daiso if your country has one and uh, store all your wonderful Beyblade X collections and parts for bringing around, you know, to practice and to play. Let's get down to it. Alright, first thing, let's take a look at the official Beyblade X case, gear case in fact. So uh, as you can tell, this one doesn't have the Asia QR code. I bought mine from Japan because it is cheaper from importing from Japan. Well, mainly because if you guys are from Singapore or at least within the part of Asia, you guys know how expensive the cases can be in our side of the country. So in Japan, these cases are roughly about 3,000 plus yen, if I'm not wrong. I'll put the price somewhere on the screen. And of course, here in Singapore, <laughs> this case is a whopping, uh, well, rounded up to a $50 cost. Um, so yeah, that's why, well, one of the main reasons why I'm doing this video is because we're going to compare some of the official products with um, cheaper variations and probably considerable products that you might want to use for containing your Beyblade collection. Alright, so definitely if you guys are planning to buy the official gear case, I would highly recommend you guys to sort uh, or rather the to look for um, a cheaper alternative especially for like myself i just buy mine off japan because it's a lot cheaper um, therefore i think i probably won't get the qr code for this one in the asia app in the future who knows maybe if i can find a cheaper alternative for an asia version of this case i might go for it because definitely definitely one is never enough <laughs> Alright, so let's take a look at this thing. Uh, let's break it apart first before um, we move on to the rest of the product. So looking at the back of it, of course, it shows you what kind of products you can have um, lined up inside the, the gear case. As you can tell, you can hold a grip, you can have your uh, cord. Uh, that is if it's like a straight version. Mine are usually the bent version because I prefer to play my cord, um, cord launchers that way. And of course, you can have up to, let's see, Oh, you can actually put in um, either a regular cord launcher or a string launcher into the slot. So it is designed in a way that you can have either one of the launchers placed in. And of course, if you have the Bay, Bay Battle Pass, you can actually slot it in there. But for us in Asia, um, the Bay Battle Pass has not been officially launched yet. And we're going to still have to wait uh, for at least somewhere within the first quarter of 2024 which is very soon in fact we're in february right now so we're, it could be launched in february or it could be launched in march who knows but anyways look forward to that uh, in the future and of course you can have up to eight bay blades with uh six variation of extra bits well we all know that there are a lot of bit variations right now especially with uh, unicorn sting being released and of course with the sphinx cow skull uh, being released very soon so yeah the, eventually this case is going to run out of space <laughs> so uh if i'm not wrong i think the base uh bay blades itself can hold up like the, the full ratchet and bit uh, set up so you can have like another eight red uh, eight bits here and then your your other accessory bits um extra bits that you can use for tournament play or even casual play be placed there for easy switching all right so let's burst this thing open um let's see how easy it is to tear it up uh, it seems like i don't even need a pen knife um and yeah so it's it's strange like the whole cardboard is empty so i'm guessing the code is inside the case itself so a very unique beyblade x product that doesn't have the code underneath the cardboard flap so that's very cool um considering that i've seen a lot of these flaps being like dismantled from this in the retail stores so which is kind of a bad thing but anyways okay let's try this open and uh, let's see uh, if I'm right about the coat being inside the back. I'm just gonna rip a hole inside this thing. Okay, I have the gear case out of the plastic bag now. Let's unzip this. I'm just gonna be very careful and make sure that the coat is indeed inside the case itself. 
before I show it to the camera. Um, yes, it is. It is inside the case. Inside, in fact, it's in the pocket slot here. So if you want to be careful, the pieces of paper here basically has like a present uh, QR code that you can scan uh, for a questionnaire and all that kind of stuff. Then plus the day code itself. So yeah. So basically, this is what is inside the case. BX25 QR code. All right, and that's where you get your points for purchasing official Beyblade X products. So yes, so if you really want the extra points um, to try and get your Cobalt Drake, your Go Hell Scythe, uh, which is leaving soon, uh, if you have not heard about it, uh, go check out my video talking about how you can use the Blade, Beyblade X app from Japan. If you are too impatient to wait for the Asia version, uh, I did explain that Hell Scythe is leaving the app store um, in fact, the website store uh, where you actually uh, get exchange your coupon code to purchase Hellside Gold version. Um, yes, it's gonna disappear, and of course, Leon, uh, the Leon Claw Gold version will be staying in its place. So, let's take a look at the product itself. Uh, of course, the product is made in Japan, uh, in China, not Japan, <laughs> but yeah, and the material is actually very soft. I, I know you guys can't understand how soft this thing is, um, you know, considering that you're watching through a screen. Uh, I've never owned anything like this with like the sponge cutouts and all that stuff. So yeah, the sponge can be taken out if you want to like customize the case yourself. And of course, the sponge that holds the Beyblade is tall enough to hold, uh, you know, a full custom built Beyblade. So I'm gonna take one of my um, Beyblades out of this box here all right and I'm gonna show you guys that it can fit you know a full built Beyblade just like this so just gotta squish it in there and there we go so yes it fits the entire blade with its ratchet and bit uh, although yes it doesn't fully stays in if you flip the whole sponge around so take note of that um, but yeah, otherwise, yes, there's more than enough space to actually hold a full built Beyblade. And of course, if we're talking about the bit, uh, the hole looks a bit tiny though, considering how big the, the diameter of the bit is, but it's pretty snug. So I guess even if you shake the bag, the, the stuff doesn't fall out. So that's pretty nice. All right. Okay, so... That aside, let's take a look at the sponge for the Battle Pass and um, the launcher. Now that I have gotten my Battle Pass and my two different launchers, I am just going to dissect them so that you guys have a rough idea of how this thing works. Alright, here we go. I'm going to get the Battle Pass detached to my string launcher. And of course, detaching my string launcher from the grip okay so let's let's put it in exactly like what the description says so battle pass goes in i'm gonna i'm gonna have the the sponge go back in this this thing is very flimsy at least for the part where the the thinnest portion is it i i, I have a fear that it might get torn in the future um considering like how often you take in and out of the battle pass from that spongy area so so that's gonna be a worry definitely in the future um yeah all right so they, they mentioned that you can actually fit in a string launcher um and of course the cord launcher so the, the the circle is only big enough to actually put in this portion of the launcher into the hole so it doesn't sit in securely so that's another worrying thing but then again um i guess if you shake it around yeah it does move a bit but you know i guess depends on how much force you put your launchers in but eventually you know it doesn't stay as tight as you want maybe you want to custom cut another sponge to cover the top part uh, considering that you might be putting in your grip here and the cord here at the top area yep oh cord flew out <laughs> All right, putting in the cord with the grip here. Um, yeah, and then trying to close the case. Um, a bit of a bulk because depending on where your grip is 
placed in the bag. Definitely you want to try to keep it towards the left hand side. That's why they have more space here uh, where the battle pass is. Uh, you, you could technically shift your, your grip to the other end but the problem is because your launcher is there, it's going to create that buck at the side of the bag. So it is still able to zip up. It is still able to zip up. But you know, do you want to go and damage your grip? You know, while damaging your launcher, well, at least the top part of it. So, um, definitely it will be protecting the part where it launches the bay blade itself. So, do consider that in how you, you know, arrange your stuff inside the bag itself. So, that's it for this gear box, uh, gear case <laughs> for the Beyblade X collection. Um, I don't know, putting a cord inside this thing feels a bit, um, you know, a bit uncompetitive like considering that I like my cords to be curved so that you know the grips the the gears get to you know touch the entire thing throughout when you're ripping. So some people like to have their cords straight but I personally prefer mine a bit bad. So yeah I don't know. I, I have a feeling that eventually this might end up straightening out the cords as well. Uh, it's good for those who actually use uh, straight cords but you know for myself I probably make not make use of the case to hold my cords. Alright so let's move this aside and let's talk about the other boxes that you can probably use to contain your collection of Beyblade X products. Okay so the other main official item that you probably will talk about is the 3-on-3 three -three deck box. Um, personally, myself, when I go for any G3 competitions and I, if I don't have any plans for any um, uh, community tournaments or anything like that, I probably will only use the 3 on 3 um, deck box. So I will just hold my 3 competitive Beyblades uh, inside. And of course, inside here, I probably will bring like spare parts like ratchets and bits, anything like that. Um, you know, for my Beyblades in case like during the competition itself uh, the parts get destroyed, at least this way I can replace the parts but sometimes depending on the game masters there they may not allow you to switch out parts because they are of different colours um, of the ones that you are currently using let's say for example um, I have, let's see uh, so this, these are the parts that I'm using for my house chain so yeah so my house chain as you can tell I'm actually using the 560 ratchet from Viper Tail and of course I'm using the yellow ball from the wizard arrow starter set so although technically they are both ball bits but because of different colors and different production lines um, the response and the reactions might be a bit different so sometimes the game masters for each competition may not approve of switching you know parts of different colors although technically they are the same parts um, so oh wait is this not 60 oh yeah they're 80 sorry <laughs> my bad okay so but yeah, so anyway, so this is basically how I go about going for my major tournaments, G2, G3, G1. I'm just gonna carry a deck of three and then have, you know, spare bits and ratchets. I do not carry spare blades because blades usually are more durable than the ratchets and bits. So this is my recommendation for, you know, at least uh, the most basic form of purchasing an official Beyblade X product so all you need is a deck box of three um, the case is just generally there to help you carry more stuff just in case if you're doing any community um, competitions uh, after the, the major events itself and all that kind of stuff and you want to bring more parts to do some customization uh, the gear case is definitely wonderful but for me since I do not have time to you know, go around you know playing community events and all that kind of stuff as well Usually the 3-on-3 three -three deck box is more than enough and they are fairly cheap. Um, if you guys are buying this off uh, Asia sites uh, or even Japan, Japan is a lot cheaper as usual. Um, this thing can be about, I guess, uh, 6 $7 from Japan. In, in Asia, this thing is about 9 to $11 depending on where you're buying from. So yeah, take note of that. Um, if you have a budget in Beyblade X, uh, you know, uh, hobbies, Definitely, this is the cheaper alternative as uh, 
visually for competitive play and you know the main reason why you can hide your stuff and then not reveal to your opponent what you are actually going to use so there we go let's move on to the next items which are from Daiso okay so for most Singaporeans at least in my country we are well known to this particular box from Daiso so <laughs> this box here I have left the stickers here so at least you guys have a rough idea of how much it will cost yes it's 150 yen uh, in Singapore this thing is about I would say about three-ish dollars to four three to four dollars worth um, not everything in Daiso is uh, 100 yen or rather two dollars anymore in Singapore it used to be two dollars every single product but ever since uh, Daiso had to change their marketing strategy for earning more overseas um, boxes and all this uh, tend to be a bit more slightly more expensive now so 100 yen items usually are around the two dollars and 20 cents range uh, per piece so one box like this would have cost right now about three to four dollars which isn't too expensive compared to like the three on three deck box and the gear case and of course if you can see this is actually my very first case or box that i use to hold all my beyblade x products including like a wing scale um and of course the cords and launchers that i will use in um you know friendly competitive play um and of course, you know, all the blades that every single variation of blades, at least one, uh, we're not talking about all the different colors, just one of each um, type of blade I can fit into this box, at least of this current release date uh, up to uh, Unicorn Sting, which is VX26. This box is able to hold every single variation of blades. Um, I can have one section here that holds all the three, uh, the 60 height ratchets and 80 height ratchets and every single bit that has been released up to this point of time and still have space for um you know um a whole bay blade or two uh, fixed in or even whole tiny launchers like this um so yeah so basically what i did is i would hold like a launcher a regular size launcher here uh i definitely don't have space for a string launcher okay but you can definitely squeeze in all the blades and of course if you have if you need more space for blades here you can definitely squeeze in like that or you could always put them uh, line up like this and have them vertically sorted like this so that they they you know when they shake they don't move out of place that easily you know and cause less rattling inside your bag <laughs> so yeah so like even for the grips and all this i can still place it like this and it will still be fine i can close it up um pretty nicely you see even with the the, the wing skill i can have my knee launcher here i can have my grip over there and i can still close it up pretty nice pretty compact so fantastic box from Daiso that has done a lot of great builders in Singapore well in terms of carrying stuff. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. So let's move on to two more boxes before we end this video. Alright, so for the other two boxes, these are actually Daiso's new line of cases that I've noticed uh, recently while I was doing some window shopping at Daiso and it's the Sikiri version of cases so these are usually used for like uh, tiny knickknacks for handicrafts so i noticed that the size compartments were actually pretty good for uh, bits so what i did here was i would arrange bits accordingly to their type so like i have like needles uh, high needles here uh, sorry needles high needles um tapers and of course like low flats and all that so whichever boosters that you end up buying with multiples and you have spare parts and you want to stand them uh, stand by them for like uh, replacements especially for uh, wear and tear at least the box itself um, lets you neatly arrange them um, according to how many you have and the type of bits that you have so i have you can tell that i have a few empty slots because uh, a lot of the bits tend to be quite rare and you only can get them from certain packs and um, uh, deck sets and all that kind of stuff so they are pretty expensive and rare bits um, so 
those bits are currently inside the other box that I showed you just a while ago and these are basically my spares so these are the extras that I have just in case the other ones wear out and I need to replace them and this is the Sikiri 10 so um, apparently this particular version of the box is pretty popular because there are smaller variations in terms of like how many pockets they have inside the box and the wonderful thing about this whole set is they are stackable on each other <laughs> as you can tell so very very neatly organized um, collection of boxes uh, fantastic fantastic stuff so there is another variation with like Sikiri 6 so they have 6 slots instead of 10 slots but I find this one a lot more easy to contain all the different ratchets especially if you're arranging them to like 60 and 80 so right now because there's only like four variations of ratchets um, as you can tell I don't have any of the 90 uh, sorry um, 960 and 980 versions so 980 variations are coming with the Sphinx Skull which is not released until the 22nd of um, February uh, which is very soon by the end of this month and of course the other one which is the 960 which is released by the Phoenix Wing of course I don't have a lot of Phoenix Wings uh, that are spare so that's why the slot for the 960 is empty but as you can tell I have quite a collection of the regular 360, 460, 560 and of course the 380, 480 and I'm missing a few 580 because uh, I'm actually using them <laughs> for my comp competitive play. So as you can tell, lots of space for collecting off your bits and ratchets, uh, especially if you're looking to organize your home in the mini minimalistic style. Fantastic, fantastic stuff in Daiso. You can find them if you have Daisos running in your country. Of course, the boxes for these are within the 100 yen pricing. So these are about uh, $2.20 each, at least here in Singapore. And yeah, so these are my recommendations for boxes and of course gears or cases that you can probably use for Beyblade X. Aside from the two official ones, these are the ones that I recommend from Daiso if you are on a budget. Guys, as usual, thank you so much for um, watching all my content up to this point of time, especially for all the Beyblade fans that just recently got to know my channel. Uh, I do a lot of stuff regarding the hobbies I love, so that's why there's a whole variety of video contents on my YouTube channel, unlike those who are just focusing on Beyblade stuff. Um, if you like the content, make sure you leave a like on this video, and of course, subscribe for more uh, hobby. Uh, passionate videos like this one and i'll see you guys in the next uh, video until then matane